Hello, good morning, and welcome to this date in history, also known as TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by actual historians, but mainly things that we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the smart device application Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on this day.com. For links to those sources, the music, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am A.O. Zander. I'm Meek Cleaver. And today is Sunday, also known as Sunday, August 7th, 2022. So, as the question goes, what happened on this date? In 1420, construction began on the dome of Florence Cathedral, designed by Renaissance architect uh, Filippo Brunelleschi. Huh. I wonder what country that's in. Uh, Florence, Italy. Oh, okay, Florence. Okay. Yeah. Um, Piazza del Duomo. That sounds Italian to me. Italiano. Uh, bibbidi boobidi bobbidi. It's 1479. During the Battle of Guinegate, Emperor Maximilian I uh, fought King Louis X. Um, at least their forces did. You know? Yeah. And look at that nose. Though. What a schnoz, you know? He just fought. Uh, well, let's see here. I can look this up. Battle of Guinegate, 1479. Open up a Google tab. Uh, 1479. Good. Okay, this one here. All right. Uh, belligerents, uh, commanders and leaders, strength, uh, casualties, losses, um, battle results. Uh, according to the French historian Bertrand Schnurb, what a name! <laughs> Schnurb. Schnurb. S C H N E R B. Schnurb. I'm gonna schnurb it. Uh, the battle was not decisive in determining the Burgundy War. Uh, despite winning, Maximilian had to abandon the siege of Thurian and disband his army, either because the Netherlanders did not want him to become too strong, or because his treasury was empty. Okay. So uh, it was ultimately it was broke. Yeah. Well, whatever the case, it was uh, it was a bleh. Like, it, it sucks when when battles like end up indecisive and not significant because people die. Uh, yeah. You know, like they died for nothing. You know, is that what you're saying? Like. Yeah. Anyway, 1573, Francis Drake's fleet returned to Plymouth after a year spent raiding for Spanish treasure. Hmm. So that sounds like he's a privateer. Yeah. You know? Uh, although it says here, Admiral, Explorer, and Navigator, Francis Drake. Yeah. So. It's kind Six of a strong word, raiding. Yeah. Raiding for Spanish treasure. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously they're pirating Spain. You know, Span Spanish yeah. ships. Bring them back. You know, well, that's why they financed them and sent them over there to yeah. bring back riches. Yeah. Well, also, like, you know, because not only are you bringing back riches, but those riches you're taking from, you know, your enemy. Of course. Like, Spain. It's called raiding. Yeah. 1606 was possible first performance of Shakespeare's tragedy Macbeth, performed in the Great Hall at Hampton Court Palace for King James I. Hmm. So that might be, like, you know, the first time this was, you know, played. Could be. Macbeth is, you know, a really, uh, um, important, you know, play. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, it is. 1620, astronomer Johannes Kepler's mother was arrested for witchcraft. Uh-oh. That's never good. No. But, uh, yeah, this is, I believe, this is the guy who, uh, our Kepler telescope that we use now, you know, you've been oh, hearing... Really? Yeah, you've been hearing, like, you know, our new telescope, and it, yeah. it took that amazing, like, astrological shot of all those galaxies and everything. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think this is the guy it's named after. Oh, okay. So, Johannes Kepler. So, that guy's mother was arrested for witchcraft on this date. Um, well, uh, hopefully that ended okay. You know, maybe she was acquitted, I don't know. Uh, also in 1620, the battle at Ponce de, or Ponce de Sey in Poitou, French King Louis XI defeated his mother, Mary de Medici. Alright, so we have one guy's mom is getting arrested, this other guy is just fighting his mom. Is, is, is today some kind of like... Like mistreat your mother day or something? Like, <laughs> what's going on? It's the same t well, it's same not year. Mother's Day, I'll tell you that. But it's the same year, yeah. so at the same time yeah. that that was happening, this happened. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Jumping on up into 1782, George Washington created the Purple Heart Medal, the original name badge of military merit, as commander of the Continental Army. I didn't know George Washington created that medal. I did not either, but now because we both know, and now we know when. Yeah. Yeah. 1782, the Purple Heart, mm -hmm. originally named the Badge of Military Merit. Yeah. 
you know. Mm-hmm. So, 1802, Napoleon ordered the reinstallment or reinstatement of slavery in Saint Dominique, Haiti. Reinstatement. Huh. Yeah, that. Um, yeah, I, I think either he or maybe the person before him. Uh, took away slave because I know that uh, there is a brief moment in history where France took away slavery, uh, but then they reinstated it in their in their colony areas. So they didn't they didn't have it in France anymore. Right. But in their African colonies, you have Africans there. You know. Well, so you know, over history, it's just not blacks that were slaves. All all dude, colors have been. Dude, there were white slaves slave. and everything. Yeah. Like like the whole like I was actually watching something you know just about this like couple weeks ago mm-hmm. and like this whole thing about you know blacks being slaves is a fairly new you know thing like it's a fairly new focus like back in the day of, of slavery you know there are white slaves there are black slaves there's more black slaves you know because of the African slaves. slaves but I mean like you know in in European history you know the slaves were white because you know you conquer you know yeah you, you conquer lands around you you know, it's, it's, you know, dog eat dog world. Eat or be eaten. Conquer or get conquered. So you conquer, what do you do with those extra people? You know, especially the lower ones, you know? Well, put them to work. You know? They were, they were white. You know, they were just other Europeans. You know? Like, yeah. But eventually, you know, all the major European countries started banning slavery at the hometown. And then they kept it, you know. Now, the UK just outright banned it. Yeah. And so did France. Uh, but then Napoleon, as we see here, reinstated it, and this is Haiti. That's not French yeah. soil. That's no. a colony. Yeah. So reinstated it in the colonies, at least. Yeah. So there's that. Anyway, 12 years later, 1814, Pope Pius the tw- seventh uh, uh, reinstated the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits. Huh. Society of Jesus. Yeah. Jesuits. Okay. 1907, Major League Baseball Washington Senators legendary pitcher Walter Johnson won first of his 416 career wins in a 7-2 versus Cleveland. All right. My all-time great pitcher. Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, this is a start. It's like his, his first of oh, 416. Yeah. So this is you know yeah. this is the beginning. Yeah. 1907. Dang. 1912, uh, Progressive, the Bull Moose Party nominated Theodore Roosevelt for U.S. President. Yeah, that's right. And at some point, so I, I suspect soon, uh, we're going to hear um, about him uh, getting shot. Um, but it was actually like, uh, it was protected by like, a, it was like a notepad or something in his breast pocket here. Mm. Uh, like he was, he was giving a speech and straight up took a bullet to the chest and, and it was oh. actually in, you know, uh, his, his chest. Really? Uh, but like, you know, it, it was lodged there in, in the peck. Um, and he kept speaking for like an hour and then he went and sought medical attention huh. you know but this is Theodore Roosevelt yeah. you know like this is like you know he's a rough rider like this yeah. guy's fought bears bare handed yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. this is a bamf a bad ass mother trucker you know <laughs> 1929 New York Yankees slugger Babe Ruth tied MLB record by hitting grand slams in consecutive games for the second time in a 13 13- hole and a 13 to 1 win versus the Philadelphia A's. Hey! Hey. Hey. But hey, cool. Second time, eh? Hey. Oh, God. Whoa. What's all that about? <laughs> One year later, 1930, Canadian Prime Minister Mackenzie King lost the election to Richard Bedford Bennett of the Conservative Party. Uh, Canadian, eh? Nah, yeah, we were just literally yeah, making fun yeah, of Canadians. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Like, I and I really didn't read that. I know he yeah. couldn't read it. So, 1934, U.S. Court of Appeals upheld lower court ruling, striking down government's attempt to ban controversial uh, James Joyce novel Ulysses. Yeah, I've heard that name. I've never read the book to my knowledge, but I've heard this name, and it, it comes up a lot. You know, Ulysses is a very controversial book. I don't know. I don't know why, but you I'm know. Familiar with it. I I've seen that name a lot. So. 1938, the 2000s Brooklyn Dodgers home run. Legendary shortstop Leo Droucher homers off Reds hurler Peaches Davis in an eighth inning out of a 6-3 win. Good old Leo Droucher. Yep. 365 days later, in 1939, millionaire Howard Hughes was presented with a Congressional Gold Medal. Nice. Maybe got that wigged out. Yeah, well, he, he, uh, he developed an extreme case of OCD. 
and like you know developed a tap like you know you have to like tap yeah. like seven times or whatever he did well he did the whole cleanly thing couldn't yeah. touch anything had to wash and do everything yeah, yeah. really lost his marbles yeah yeah Anyway, moving on up into 1946, the first U.S. commemorative coin of a black U.S. citizen, uh, the Booker T. Washington half dollar. That's Whoa. interesting. Didn't know it. 1946. Wow, yeah. Huh. Read that one more time. The first U.S. commemorative coin of a African American, a black yeah. U.S. citizen, yeah, yeah. the Booker T. Washington half dollar. Wow. So the 50 cent piece. I never knew that. Well, let me see. Let me look this I, up here. I'd love to see one of those coins. Uh, they must be super collectible. First off, just to find a half dollar anywhere. Well, like uh, they have them at my um, at uh, that recycling center I go to. Oh yeah. Yeah, like you know you you yeah. see my collection yeah, yeah. now. They have fifty cent pieces there. Uh, but let's see here. Huh. Um. Trying to get a bigger picture for you. Can you see it? Okay, there we go. Yeah, I can see it. That's not it, though. This is it. Is that it? Here we go. That sure looks like it. Yeah. And what's the year again? 1948. Yeah. Uh, no, six. six. 46. Great year. Yeah. 1947, Thor Heyerdahl and the crew of the Contiki crash into a reef in the Tamautu Islands and French Polynesia after 100 days uh, or after 101 days crossing the Pacific Ocean. 101 days to cross... Oh, so it has to be a, uh, a boat then. Of course. Well, I mean, like, you know, it could have been a, like a seaplane or something. Yeah, I was thinking, well, like, you know... Uh, well... But yeah. Uh, ethnogra ethnographer, archaeologist, and explorer. Ethnographer. What is an ethnographer? Ethnographer... A person who studies and describes the culture of a particular society or group. Oh, okay. okay. Ethno, ethnic, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In 1954, Englishman Roger Bannister defeated Australia's John Landy in the mile at the Empire Games in Vancouver. The first time two men ran sub-four-minute mile in the same race. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I remember that name, Bannister. Oh. Roger Bannister. Mm hmm 1956, 51-year-old Satchel Paige of the Miami Marlins won a game before the largest crowd in minor league history, 57,000 attending at Miami's Orange Bowl, the International League, Marlins 6-2 versus Columbus Jets. 51. He's he sure, in the minor leagues, huh? Yeah. He sure loves that baseball. <laughs> 1956 as well, Boston Red Sox finds slugger Ted Williams $5,000 for spitting at... Uh, oh... Boston Red Sox find uh, they, they they find him, you know, uh, five thousand dollars for spitting at heckling uh, Boston fans. This was the third incident in three weeks. So wait, five, is this the five same? Five grand then? Oh God, that's almost a year's salary. Yeah. Well, actually, it's here. Five thousand dollar, nineteen fifty-six. Five thousand fifty-six. Let's see here. Uh, fifty-four thousand four hundred sixty-eight dollars and ninety-three cents today. So, yeah, that's fine and good, but uh, you look at what ball players were getting paid then. Yeah, and it's even bigger than that. Yeah, like you know, if it, if it was a year's salary, it'd be a hundred million dollars today. There's a lot more factors that go in than just the numbers. Yeah, you know. 1960, Arnold Palmer's 20th PG Tour 1 rallies from a five-stroke deficit to enter a playoff, then defeated Jack Fleck and Bill Collins to win the Insurance uh, City Open. He was known as a great comebacker. He'd always be down and come back uh, with Arnie's army following him. Yep. And then uh, it's probably because of his drink. Like, you know, he's out there, it's, you know, it's hot and everything. He refreshes with a nice ice cold glass of half lemonade. Well, the Palmer came a whole lot later. I'm, I'm making a joke here. <laughs> Not a good one. When are they? <laughs> 1961, Soviet Premier Khrushchev predicted the USSR economy will suppress the US. <laughs> I think he was wrong. <laughs> Yeah, no, we uh, we duped them into uh, dumping all they had into the space race. You know, like, as I said yesterday, like, you know, uh, yeah, we didn't win the space race, but we bankrupted that nation, you know. True. Doing that. 1963, Jacqueline Kennedy became the first U.S. First Lady to give birth to Patrick Kennedy. 
uh, since Mrs. Cleveland. All right. I didn't realize she gave birth in office. Well, President Kennedy was in office. And that's what we read, right? Yeah. Uh, since uh, Mrs. Cleveland, so Grover Cleveland, you know, and he was yeah. a while ago. I so. didn't realize when she was in office. You think I would have memory of that? Grover Cleveland, 22nd and 24th. So, um, well, he died in 1908. So, yeah, so we're looking at at least 60 years. Yeah. You know, so that's interesting. 1964, U.S. Congress approved Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, granting U.S. President Lyndon Johnson authority to assist any Southeast Asian facing, quote, communist aggression, end quote. He uses this to openly bring the U.S. into the Vietnam conflict. Yep. I mean, we were already there, but uh, we went full bore. Well, the whole Gulf of Tonkin thing, like, you know, they've even admitted, like, apparently recently, like, you know, within the past 10 years or so, because uh, I was watching, you know, once again, Tim Pool. And, like, they're referring to something I haven't seen yet, nor have I really looked up. But at some point, our government, like, did say, oh, yeah, we fabricated the whole thing just to get in there, you know? Because it's been, like, you know, well, we 50 years. Past, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, you know, we did that with 9-11. What did that have to do with, with you know, with Iraq? Yeah. Right? Like, you know, like, some some crazy Saudi who's, who's in the cave somewhere in the Middle East... You know, destroy the Twin Towers. Let's go invade Iraq and take out Saddam Hussein. How does that make any sense? You know? No, like, didn't Tim Pool get uh, fined millions of dollars? No, that's Hussein? Alex Jones. Uh, oh, 46 okay. million. Yeah, okay. the ridiculous Sandy Hook crap, you know? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, 1965, uh, Lee Kuan Yew, Prime Minister of Singapore, signed a separation agreement with Malaysia after two years of political union. Huh. So, like, Singapore... Yeah. I thought... Isn't Singapore a city, though? Uh, or is it a country? Yes. No, it's a city. Okay, so... So, so they're a city-state within Malaysia? I'm not sure. Hold on a second. Singapore. Singapore. Country in Asia. It's a country. It's a country. Okay. I Officially the Republic of Singapore. And, yeah, it is just one city. See, look at this. Yeah. Like, uh, there's, like, you know, it's... And it's really zoomed in, you know, when you think about yeah. it. So they are a legit city state. Literally a city, you yeah, know, a that, it, that's they, a state. And a state, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know, you look at the ancient Greeks and everything. Like, you know, their borders really didn't go much farther than their actual city. Like, you know, they were, they were called city-states because they're a state that's big enough just for one city. There's no other settlements. So they, were, they hooked with Malaysia for a while and then... Uh, they were the capital of Malaysia, I think. So, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, but apparently uh, not, you know, well, this is only after two years of political union, so maybe they were their own thing for a while, I don't know. Uh, we're going to have to study more into Singaporean history, you know, that's interesting. Yeah. So. 1972, Yogi Berra, hey boo boo, uh, Sandy Koufax, Lefty Gomez, Early Win, Josh Gibson, Will Heridge, Buck Leonard, and Ross Youngs were inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Mm. It's a lot of people. Oh. 1978, thousands of mourners filed past the body of Pope Paul the Seventh, or the Sixth. Yeah. Rip. 1983, Gretchen Waits of Norway won the inaugural women's marathon at the first World Athletics Championships in Helsinki, Finland. Huh. So what did she win? Uh, a well, long distance runner. Marathon. Runner's. Okay. Yeah, marathon. Yeah. Win uh, the inaugural women's marathon. So. The first marathon. Yeah. So, it's really cool. Also, same date, same year, 1983, PGA Championship Men's Golf at the Riviera Country Club. Hal Sutton won his only major title by one stroke from Jack Nicholas. Ah. Here's this guy again with his smug face and his medal. Yeah. Jack Nicholas. Yeah. yeah. 1985, a delegation of the South African Council of Churches met with President P.W. Botha following calls by the church for urgent discussions on the causes of unrest, uh, forced removals, and the emergency regulations in the country. Hmm. Also at that time, 1985, Barbara Streisand recorded Broadway album. Barbara Streisand. Yeah. I remember that being one of uh, Carbon's curse words when he was... Uh, remember the movie we went and saw, South Park? Yeah. You know? And then, like, he had that V-chip in, you know, that he, like, you know, he swears and it shocks him. 
and he weaponizes it. He just like starts like swift, you know, saying all these swear words. And he's like Barbara Streisand. And he like force lightnings like you know the Emperor, uh, like Saddam Hussein, and everything because yeah. Saddam was in hell yeah. and everything. You're crazy, yeah. 1990, U.S. deployed troops to Saudi Arabia beginning uh, beginning Operation Desert Shield. Yep. First we yeah, had that's Desert one Shield. Of the, one of the things why. Uh, uh, um, what's his name who bombed the towers or behind it? Um, Saddam Hussein. No, no, Bin Laden. Bin Laden joined forces with the guy we just killed because like American it. troops were in uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. He said, that's it? Okay, I'll join up with you. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. you know, like, like political maneuvers, you know, you force yeah, people into doing that, things. Before that, he was kind of defending the U.S. now, uh, you know. Yeah. And then that, that all changed. Yep. 1991, U.S. team of Carl Lewis, Mike Marsh, Leroy Burrell, and Dennis Mitchell set a 4 by 100 meter relay record, uh, world record, of 37.67 seconds in Zurich, Switzerland. Mm. Wow. That's fast. Yeah. 1991 as well, courts ruled Manuel Noriega may access some secret U.S. documents. Okay. Uh, well, this has to be during that Panama crisis, because this is a Panamanian yeah. general yeah. and dictator. Yeah, which is the right time. Hmm. 1992, the there Orlando Magic signed NBA number one draft pick Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq, baby. The diesel. Yeah. Yeah, no, like, uh, as I uh, told uh, my dad here earlier today... Uh, I was watching, uh, you know, his education, he, you know, um, and um, uh, Shaq got a new boat, like this yacht. He's just like, oh, what should I name her? And someone said, uh, name your boat Free Throw, so that way you'll never sink it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Barbaric. Yeah. <laughs> like, jeez, man. Anyway, 1997, Garth Brooks performed a free concert in New York City's Central Park for HBO, later releasing it as a Garth live from Central Park. All right. Okay. Pretty cool. Yeah. You know? The year 2000, Los Angeles Lakers announced retirement of former star player and executive vice president of basketball operations, Jerry West. Something's in my eye. Jerry uh, West, something in my eye. Yeah. Uh, named Mitch Kupchak. Kupchak. To succeed him, Kupchak. That oh. sounds. That sounds like some kind of like you know, some kind of ketchup. No, it sounds like a, a form of vomiting. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> God, I'm gonna Kupchak. <laughs> you know, well, you know, uh, Kupchak, Kupchak. You know, give me a cup. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the logo, the all-time great, one of the great, all-time greatest, if not the greatest, general manager, let alone one of the greatest all-time players too. Nice. He brought so many championships to uh, to LA as a general manager. Yeah, Lakers Lakers were pretty uh, pretty epitome for a while. Yeah, they were dominant. Well, yeah, that and Boston Celtics. Right? Yeah, yeah, and then remember that uh, that time you turned into a uh, uh, what's our other team? The Clippers. The Clippers. You turned into a Clippers fan. <laughs> Still am. Well, yeah, if I watched ba basketball at all, I would be. Well, no, but you did it because the Lakers, like, they demanded, like, you know, like, more exclusive channels. Yeah, and yeah, you couldn't afford that. I go, no. So, so you just started that. watching Clippers, and then at one point you're rooting for the Clippers versus the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, no! <laughs> I'm a Clipper fan. Yep. Betrayal! <laughs> 2004, Cubs pitcher Greg Madu entered the history books with his 300th career win in the Chicago's 8-4 triumph versus... Uh, San Francisco at SPC Park. I need to breathe. <laughs> so, 2005, U.S. sprinter Justin Gatlin blitzed field to win 100, milli or 100 meters in 9.88 seconds at the World Athletics Championships in Helsinki, Finland. Mm. Two years later, 2007, Eclipse, the third book in Stephanie Meyer's Twilight Saga, was published by Little Brown. Uh, the initial print ran 1 million copies. Yeah. I'm not familiar with it. Twilight Saga, you ever heard of it? Uh, yeah, the, uh, no, like, uh, the Sparkly Vampires, yeah. you remember? Okay. No, I don't. So there's, like, you know, there's Eclipse, which is a third one. Uh, I think the first one is just called Twilight. Okay. And I think there's, like, the, the, the second one is New Moon, I don't know. But, like, at some point they introduce this, this werewolf guy, you know, and, and then, like, 
Then there's this love triangle be between like a werewolf, a vampire, and like a human girl. You know, it was, to the whole thing. It's, Sorry, like you know, I've never seen them. All I know is just what I've been exposed to online. Out. Uh. Out of my, you know, control, mind you, like, you know, people made memes and everything, and inevitably, you know, you're exposed to what the masses are exposed to. Well, at least you, you know. At least you're aware of it. That's better than me. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't say being aware of it is better by any... <laughs> it's garbage. Oh, I'm a vampire and I sparkle. Ooh, I made a glitter. Ooh, who fuck cares? It's entertainment. It's stupid. For some. <sighs> Okay, moving on. Anyway, 2007 as well, San Francisco Giants slugger Barry Bonds hit his 756th career home run to break Hank Aaron's uh, long-standing MLB record. Hmm. Doesn't say anything as, as juiced up or anything. Uh, hmm. Well, slugger, so... Yeah. Oh, God. 2009, the TikTok single released by Kesha, Billboard Song of the Year 2010. Oh, no, TikTok single. No, Oh, so, oh, God. Wow, I'm indoctrinated. <laughs> so, I was thinking this is that stupid app, you know? But, like, you know, then I'm reading. I'm like, 2019? No, 2019. TikTok has a bit around. No. No. TikTok on the spot. Da, 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 da. That song. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, so, yeah. So, 2009, the TikTok single released by Kesha, later to receive the Billboard Song of the Year in 2010. So, which is... Admittedly, a decent song, you know. Compared now to what, you think of it as something entirely different oh than my, a song. Well, it, it is a song, but like I, it is a yeah. song. But that doesn't what comes like BC. Yeah. Oh. What comes to mind to me and what you say it is is two different things. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let me tell a story, people. Okay, oh, so geez, here we go. So VC, you know, voice chat and everything, you know. I, you know, I talk to my dad every now and then about, you know, happenings of Discord and whatnot, you know, blah, blah, blah. so I'm just like, oh, yeah, I was in VC with this guy and yada, yada, yada. Now, keep in mind, this man was born in 1946. He's, you know, a baby boomer, you know, first generation, you know, baby boomer. And his generation went to Vietnam. Now, VC means something completely different for these people. It means Viet Cong, you know, <laughs> also known as Charlie. Now... Now, thank God, because he was drafted, but he got off on a medical technicality. But uh, he, you know, like, you know, my dad did, you know, lose some people he did know. So, like, you know, it's... But, uh, so, unfortunately, I was giving him many, you know, flashbacks when I'm just talking about voice chat. He's thinking about VC. Via call. And it's just like, so, mind what you say around your elders, people, please. Okay? You know... But perhaps just don't talk to him at all. <laughs> well, what well, some can hope, but they, that's, <laughs> never gonna your, happen. Your dreams will never come true. Never. <laughs> Let's move on. 2010: Jerry Rice, Emmett Smith, John Randall, Russ Grimm, Ricky Jackson, Floyd Little, and Dick LeBeau were inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, it's a lot of people. 2015, U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump said in a CNN interview that news anchor Megyn Kelly had, quote, blood coming out of her eyes, blood coming out of her wherever, end quote. What the hell? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. What does that even that mean? For. Well, what do you think uh, oh. women have? Oh, my God. Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I wonder why the media doesn't like him. I don't wonder. I know why. That was just like Trump, like, Donald. Come on, dude. Yeah. Like, so really. actually, he has toned down a bit since those days. Yeah. God, that's <laughs> rough. Yeah. Oh, anyway, one year later, 2016, U.S. swimmer Katie Ledecky set a new world record with a time of three minutes 56.46 seconds to win the gold medal in the women's 400 meter freestyle at the Rio de Janeiro Olympics. Yes. Now I'm going to be hung in effigy. Well, you know, what's her face can't define a, what a woman is. Yeah. And now men can get pregnant. So now through that loophole, now I actually do have a say in abortion, you know, yeah. things. Because apparently I can get pregnant. You know, I don't know. Like, so, but then again, did I just assume my own gender? Did I did I offend somebody on my behalf? You know, like... What, find a safe place, quick. <laughs> what? Someone came up with a good point, though, the, the other day. I was listening to something. How do we define other species? 
you know, how does a bull know a bull and a cow knows a cow? How does that work? You know, yeah. no, I'm not a cow anymore. Go away. You know what? It, what? <laughs> it, it's it's madness. Like yeah. we we need. So we're the only species that. Uh, unfortunately, we need a war so we can like know about things that actually merits complaining about, because we have it way too easy. We have nothing better to do, so we just find anything. Because like you know, when you're so soft. And literally the worst thing that you experience in your life is when your macchiato has a little bit too less whipped cream. You know, when you haven't experienced anything worse than that, then that is the worst thing you've experienced in your life. So, of course, you know, you're going to come out swinging because, you know, you think you've been offended. Whereas there's people out there who don't even know what a macchiato is. And they have to, as you say, boil the bark of trees to get some drinking water. Yeah. You know, like, Moving on. we need perspective. So, yeah. 2016, Miami Marlins veteran Japanese outfielder uh, Ichiro Suzuki became the 30th member of the 3000 Hit Club in a 10 to 7 win versus Rockies. Nice. Here we go again. 2016 as well, United States men's four times 100 meter freestyle relay team won the final in three minutes and nine seconds, or three minutes nine seconds, and 92 second, or whatever you get it. At the Rio de Janeiro Olympics, Michael Phelps' record 19th Olympic gold medal. Wow. Yeah, a bunch. Wow. Man, yeah, how many medals do you need, dude? Like, 2018, Crazy Rich Asians, the first Hollywood film with an all-Asian cast starring Constance Wu, Henry Golding, and Michelle Yeoh premiered in Los Angeles. You know, never going to see that movie. That, it's just, it, it just sounds so hateful, you know. 2018, China banned release of Winnie the Pooh movie Christopher Robin after a character was used to mock Chinese President Xi Jinping. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so Winnie the Pooh was banned in China yeah. because this guy, because he looks like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I know, I, I know. I know. So have you seen the memes of like, you know, like, uh, I have Okay, hold on a second. Xi Jinping, Winnie the Pooh. Why can't I type? Okay, so let's see here. Images. Um, yeah, and this is probably gonna get my video flagged like hard. Oh, here we go. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. Winnie the Pooh. Okay, let's move on. 2020, just two years ago, Cardi B released a single WAP, which stands for Wet Ass Pussy, by the way. Oh, really? That's, that's the status of our music industry. Literally using, you know, sex slang, WAP, featuring Megan Thee Stallion, debuted as number one on Billboard Hot 100. Seriously? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, d just disgusting. Just, just appalling. Like, I guess it's pronounced the same way, but W-O-P is to be Italian. No, no it's WAP, not WAP. WAP, okay. No, like, you know, WAP is without papers. Yeah, you said WAP. WAP, so that's no, I said WAP. Oh, okay. W-A-P. Yeah. You know, wet ass. You know, whatever. No, wet ass. Oh. No, no. You, you didn't hear me the first time. Yeah, I did. Yeah, wet ass pussy. That's yeah. what it stands for. Yeah, I know. Which is like seriously, that's just that's obscene. You yes. know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, before we move into births and deaths, were there anything you know that grabbed your interest today more than most? Well, personally, uh, Kennedy, uh, J uh, Jacqueline Kennedy, having a baby yeah. in the office that I didn't know about surprised yeah. the heck out of me. The other little thing I liked was the uh, the black uh, the black fifty cents. Okay, yeah, the coin. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so those are the two that stuck out for me. The two Which things. means, wait, does that mean that since then black people have been currency again? Oh, boo. hey, is yeah. that the only? I wonder if that's the only black person on a coin no. ever. No, 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 no. I, I, no, absolutely not. Um, I would think there'd be more. Martin Luther King must be. There. How many black people coins? Uh, uh, there we go. Okay, part three. Uh, well, hold on a second. Uh, uh, let's see here. Isaac Hathaway, uh, Booker T. Washington, oh. George Washington Carver, silver half dollar. Um, okay. Honorable wow. A.Z. Taylor Morton was the first treasurer. So I, I guess they put co them on commemorative coins, you know, yeah. I guess, like, you know, like, when you reach certain points in office, you get commemorative coins, you know? Yeah. Something like that. But, yeah, like, you know, those are interesting. Um, what about you? Uh, well, uh, the uh, Purple Heart. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Forgot about that. that yeah. That, that is a big one too. Yeah. Speaking of commemorative things, you know, and then um, the uh, this uh, cathedral, you know, because cathedrals took hundreds of years to build. Yeah. Like uh, Notre Dame, like what would it take? Like five hundred years or something? Really? Let me that. let me check. How long Notre Dame? Uh, built. Yeah. Built. Built. How long? Built. Uh, okay, so 182 years. Well, never mind. Still, but that's still, still a long yeah. time. Yeah, 182 years. Well, think about Jeez. it. Like you know, we add like you know, uh, 1345. There was no machines way before the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. Everything yeah. was handmade. Yeah. Artisans, you know. So like, and like I I've seen like you know like uh, artist interpretations of of what it looked like during construction because it was actually built. There is a smaller church inside of it that stayed active. For a certain period of time, oh. but like you know, they literally built Notre Dame around oh, yeah. a smaller church huh. and everything, and that that you know, like entire generations of people, you know, were born and died, you know, during and before you know the yeah. the, the completion. Of course, you yeah, know, a number so, of generations. But could you imagine like living your whole life and then like you know you just see it like just rise up by like another fifty feet and that's it, you know? Yeah. Like wow, my whole life and they only got that way that far through. Like, wow, you know. Anyway, moving on into births. In 1560, we have Elizabeth Bathroy, was a Hungarian countess and the world's most prolific female serial killer, oh. born in Nairobar, Hungary, dying in 1614. Wow, okay. Uh, let me... Serial killer. Let me Jeez. look that up real quick. Yeah. That's surprising. Yeah, let's see here. <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, she was a Hungarian noblewoman and serial killer from the family of Bathory, who owned land in the kingdom of Hungary, Bathory, and four of her servants were accused of torturing and killing hundreds of girls and women between uh, 1590 and 1610. Jeez. Hundreds. Jeez. God. You know, we think the, we think the rich are bad today, you know, with their, oh, yeah. you know, reckless spending and telling us what to do and rules for thee, not for me. Well, back in the day, they just killed you, you know? No repercussions either. Yeah. Well, they probably still can, and no repercussions. Yeah, it's true. I mean, they kill their own people. Look what happened to, uh, you know, what's his face, Epstein. Yeah. And we still don't have the client list, you know? 1742, Nathaniel Green was a U.S. military leader, or an American military leader, a major general during the American Revolutionary War, born in Potawomet, Rhode Island, dying in 1786. So yeah, before United States, he was American. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have Mata Hari, born on the state in 1876. Uh, actual name is Margaretha Gertrude Zelle. Oh really? Was a Dutch exotic dancer, courtesan, and convicted German World War One spy. Born in Leeuwarden, Netherlands, dying in 1917. Oh, yeah. Hard, yeah. Women were actually like very good to to be used as spies yeah because you know they use the stigma against them like you know feminists these days you know yeah you know there is you know still societal stigmas you know men versus women all that stuff and that's what they're all pissy about but hey if it wasn't for that stigma the United States wouldn't probably even have, have come to exist you know some of the top spy actually like you know and, and I'm not even like talking about they were topped above them by other by men no the top spies that we had during the revolution and such were women really they went into like you know the the uh you know the the brothels and the the bars and other you know places of business and such you know and they were either like you know prostitutes or like you know just barmaids and stuff like you know doing women jobs Got information. um and you know they they spoke directly to the soldiers soldiers were drunk you know, show a little sweater meat, you know, and okay. you get secrets. Really cool, you know? Yeah. yeah. 1881, Francis Dorlon was a French admiral of the fleet during World War II and Vichy Prime Minister from 1941 to 42. Born in Iraq, France, dying in 1942, so uh, he must have died in battle. All I can say is I think you want that hat. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. cool. I mean... The insignias and all that. And yeah. I mean, like, you know, it's cool. Like, you know, I'd like to own it, but it's not something I'm going to flock after. No. Um, cause of death, oh, assassinated by Fernand Bonnier de la Chapelle, who shot Darien in his headquarters in French North Africa. Damn. That didn't save him. No. Well, you know, 
1993, Louis Leakey. Oh, man. I wonder if he was leaky in his later years. Oh, man. Was a bit British paleoanthro pale paleoanthropologist and archaeologist, uh, Aldovi George, 1964 Richard Hubert Medal, uh, born in Kabete, Kenya, dying in 1972. You see the guy that went into Africa and found, uh, I'm trying to think of his name, and he goes, whatever the guy's name is, I presume, that's all he said after he hunted him down. Oh, oh, uh, Dr. Livingston, I presume. Dr. Livingston, I presume. Yeah. Uh, Leakey. Uh, yeah, I think Leakey was the guy that found him. Where did, um, let me assume, uh, explore Henry M. Stanley. It's the guy that found him? Not yeah. Leakey? Yeah, uh, oh, okay. is now a famous greeting spoken on the shores of Lake Tanganyika in November of 1871 by Welsh U.S. Uh, journalist and explorer Henry M. Stanley. Oh, okay, my bad. So it wasn't Leakey. But, uh, I guess your memory's a little leaky, you know? <laughs> 1904, Ralph Bunch was a U.S. diplomat to the United Nations, Nobel Peace Prize of 1950, born in Detroit, Michigan, dying in 1971. Well, cool. Now, see, uh, I'm going to sit here. It just says, an American diplomat, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, Ralph Bunch. Yeah. But he looks African-American. Did our source finally stop seeing color? They're not calling him African-American. They're just an American. How hard is it be? How hard is it for a black person to just be called an American? I don't know. It could be Italian, you know, dark olive skin. Yeah, no, but I'm talking about the hair. That's oh. you know, that's true. Yeah, actually, let's see here. An American, um, born in Detroit. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, Ralph Bunch appointed first African American official okay, in U.S. State Department. Go. Boom! Called it. There you go. Didn't, didn't mention that. That's good. Good. Good news. Good. You know, you want to you want to be united, then unite us with terminology. You know, stop using words to separate us. Use words to to, to bring us together. We are one. 1932, uh, Abebe Bekila uh, was an Ethiopian Olympic marathon champion. Got the Olympic gold in marathon 1960 and 64, uh, and he was Africa's first world record-breaking athlete in any sport. Uh, he won the 1960 Olympics marathon barefoot. He was yeah. born in Jato, Ethiopian Empire, dying in 1973. Wow! I don't know if they still are today, but Ethiopia, yeah, dominated those uh, long runs. Yeah, uh, Ethiopia, uh, Kenya, you know, Kenya, those, yeah, yeah. those, you know, those, well, because, like, you know, they're, they're descendants of people who, like, run out, you know, and, like, hunt, you know, and stuff. Like, well, you have to be damn fast. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. Well, when you see their legs, like, you know, they're, they're gangly. Yeah. They're long, gangly people. Yeah. You know? Like, they're built to run. So, I am not. I'm built to roll. <laughs> so, sometimes rock, but often roll. M many times they don't come together, you know. At, at least, you know, at least in any way beyond tragic. Okay, so. move on. 1975, Charlie Theron is a South African actress. Mad Max, The Cider House Rules, and Monster. Born in Benoni, uh, Benoni uh, Transvaal. I guess South Africa, somewhere. Yeah. Moving on into deaths, we have Henry IV, died on the state in 1106. He was a Roman German king and emperor from 1056 slash 84 through 1105. That's a weird thing. Uh, died at the age of 54. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. 1056. Well, whatever. I'm just. I, yeah, I, I put that date. I'm, not quite I'm sure. wondering, like, you know, like, did he become like, you know, like a placeholder king when he was a child? Because 1056. What's the what's the, what's the uh, slash 84? Well, I'm thinking like you know 1056 is when he was made king, when he was a kid. Ah, oh, okay. You know because like you know at the age of 54 he died in 1106. Yeah. So what's what's 48 minus 1100? So 56. So I think that was when he was born. Yeah. 56. Yeah. Um, you know what? I can click this. Uh, 50. So close. So I'm thinking maybe he was uh, made king as a child. Yeah, four years old. Uh, you know, that happens. But, like, yeah. but you know, the like you know the members of Congress or whatever the other political yeah. run it until he becomes of age, which he did in 84, it seems. Oh, okay. 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 And then from there until yeah. 1105, 
you know. And that he makes does, sense. I don't yeah. know if it's right, but it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to make yeah. sense of it. Yeah. Like, 1941, we have uh, Rabindranath Tagore. He was an Indian philosopher and poet, writer, Nobel Prize for Literature in 1913. Died at the age of 80. Oh, man. 1957, hey. Oliver Hardy. Hey, man. Was a U.S. comedian, Laurel and Hardy Films. Died at 65. Wow, that's young. But then again, he was really overweight. Really so. Heavy, yeah. That's yeah. Years. Yeah. We have Peter Jennings died on the state in 2005. He was a Canadian U.S. news anchor for ABC Evening News. Died of lung cancer at 67. That's still pretty young, yeah. you know. Yeah. Very young. And that concludes the show. Once again, you can check the underbar of the description for any links that you may find interesting. For all of you and all of us, we stream every day at 10 in the morning Pacific time, um, which is you know 11 Mountain. 12 Central, uh, 1 Eastern, you know, and anywhere else, do your own math. Or, like, you know what, 8 in the morning? Uh, Hawaii. Hawaii, right? Yeah. They're two hours. Yeah. They, I don't know if they don't have daylight savings or what, so it might be two or three hours. Uh, well, yeah. So, figure it out. Anyway. If you're going to Hawaii, figure it out. Yep. I am Alexander. Me, Cleaver. And you are you. And until you catch us tomorrow, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Tell them toodles. Let's go, Brandon.